Hello everyone, it's Infinity Gamer here, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the weaknesses of military orders. Now, military Orders is a very strong faction physically and also in a direct attack fashion. However, there are some serious weaknesses amongst the faction and if you're playing against them it's important that you know these weaknesses so that you can exploit them and hopefully have better outcomes when you do face Military Orders lists. So what I've done here is I've come up with a whole bunch of areas where Military Orders does underperform and a couple of bits of advice as to how you could face uh, certain things, as well as some heads up into the faction that you may not know if you don't face them often, or if you haven't played them at all. So one of the first things that you need to be aware of is that Military Orders does not have any counterintelligence in the list building at all, which means that when you're playing against them, it's always safe to strip their order pool, um, which is quite handy actually because one of the other weaknesses of military orders, which I'll go into in more detail, is that they often suffer from, I suppose, like a, a, a lack of expendable orders. Uh, so if you're taking two orders from them, yeah, they're probably not going to like you for that at all. So no counterintelligence, so that's definitely a safe move when you're playing them and facing them. They also don't have access to, strate to strategos which is good because they do have the ability to generate additional lieutenant orders uh, quite easily and quite well. So that's good as well, but it also means you don't have to worry too much about held back units uh, during the deployment phase. So that kind of covers off the pre-game aspects of things. Those are two things you don't have to worry about with military orders so you can adapt your strategy accordingly. Going on the thread of the held back hiddenness, one of the major weaknesses, I mean, I'm gonna say major, it's definitely, you can work around most of these. But one thing that I definitely struggled with when playing military orders was that hidden things like weren't so hidden. So as an example to this, if you're playing military orders and there's a camo token on the table that's mimetism minus six, it's a Trinitarian. Like there is nothing else it could really be. Same with if there's minus three camo tokens around, there's only two things it could be. It could be a mine or it could be dart. Now Dart is a great uh, unit profile, and so you could probably, I mean a smart military orders player is likely to deploy a minus three camo Dart within eight inches of a Trinitarian, because the Trinitarians have a mine layer profile. So it's reasonable to expect that within eight inches of that minus six, it could be a mine. So a Dart player, oh sorry, a military orders player with Dart is likely to place that within eight of a camera token. Now one of the ways you'll be able to kind of guess as to what it is, is Dart has forward deployment eight inches, whereas a Trinitarian has infiltration. So if the minus three camera token is beyond eight, then it's going to be a, a mine with a Trinitarian instead of a Dart. So if you, however, if you're playing a military orders person and it looks as though the mine is behind the minus six, it's, it could be the mine not placed optimally, or it could be dart placed as far forward as possible. So that is definitely like one of the things with military orders that's a weakness is that a lot of the the secret stuff isn't super secret. Now Trinitarians do have hidden deployment, so obviously there could be one on the table that you just don't see, but with military orders, because of the nature of the order pools and the points and everything like that, you'll notice a hole in their uh, order pool fairly easily. Um, and there's only a few things that could be. So I've mentioned Trinitarian that's hidden deployment. Another weakness of military orders, which plays into this a little bit, is that they only have two drop troopers. They've got a Knight of Santiago and there is a Crusader Brethren. And so if there's a little bit of a hole in their order pool um, and the points, it could be a hidden deployment Trinitarian, or it could be a Knight of Santiago, or it could be a Crusader Brethren. There's not a lot else it could be, and you know as well, because they don't have Strategos, they won't have extra things held back. So again, like on the face of it, when you know all of this summarized as best I can, is Military Rules is a fairly open and obvious faction to be playing against. You're not necessarily going to be blindsided heaps by the units themselves. So the real sneakiness that they do kind of bring to the table is pretty much the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, which has hollow projector, where there can be some sneakiness in terms of which one is it, and a hollow masked Knight Commander. I'm gonna go into the Knight Commander now because I feel like it's gonna be an obvious one 
for you if you're playing military orders, but it's also one that quite a lot of military orders lean on. Now a Knight Commander is a Lieutenant option and is popular because it produces two Lieutenant orders. Now due to the lack of Strategos, they're going to be Lieutenant orders on the table, so you're going to be able to see and you're going to know that that's what's happening. Now, Luckily for military orders players, they've got access to some good NCO options, so they will typically use those lieutenant orders on the NCOs. Knight commanders like to hide in Crozier fire teams. Now that's because they count as a Crozier, so they can build up the numbers, but the thing is, it's, ri it's rare for a military orders player to necessarily take a pure Crozier link. It's likely to be mixed with uh, four Croziers and a Black Friar. So if you want to go Lieutenant hunting and you see two Lieutenant orders on the table, the Crozier fire team is probably a safe place to go. That's just a generic statement because obviously a, a, a better military orders player will actually, you know, it won't be a Crozier, it will be Hollow Masters, maybe a Knight of Santiago or a Knight of Justice that can go into that, that link and with it being mixed already there's no real danger in it being something that isn't a Crozier. Then, or they might have it not in the link and hidden elsewhere, which I've done before to try and really stymie my opponent. But generally, you're likely to find a Knight Commander in a Crozier link. So go, go for that Crozier link, kill everything in it just to be sure. The thing to remember if you're going to do that is that the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, which I'm going to talk about a bit later in terms of like how you beat it and things like that, is the only, uh, is the only unit in military orders that has chain of command. So if you've gone Crozier hunting, if you're pretty sure you've eliminated the Lieutenant and they're still not in loss of Lieutenant, then the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre should be your next target because that's probably got chain of command. Uh, especially if it's got, I think it's the multi-rifle. If it has the APHMG, it's not their chain of command. And so that's, you know it's not gonna be. But if it has the multi-rifle, there's a chance it could be the chain of command profile because there's three profiles with the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre. Two of them are multi-rifles I believe, and then there's the APHMG. I always take the APHMG and forego the chain of command option because I prefer the extra firepower of the APHMG. So the Knight of Holy Sepulchre provides like the only real sneakiness that the military orders have because of the shell games of Hollow Projector. One of the other major weaknesses to military orders is the lack of veteran across the whole faction. Now there's a couple of reasons why that's a weakness, uh, especially with this faction itself. So the only unit that has Veteran is the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre. So the whole faction is fairly vulnerable to loss of Lieutenant, which if you know the Lieutenant is likely to be a Knight Commander in the Croziers or something like that, and if you get it successfully, then loss of Lieutenant is quite a big problem there. Now the other thing with them not having Veteran, I'm going to talk about during the next problem. But I want to touch upon the other lieutenant options that you're likely to face with military orders to start with. Joan is a possibility, like it's not necessarily a very big possibility because Joan's very expensive, however she is likely, she could be in a list that you face. Now the thing there, Joan is a very obvious lieutenant. As soon as they have inspiring leadership, which means that irregular uh, units are providing regular orders, then Joan is the lieutenant and so you go hunting for her. If they have Joan and the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre, then go for both of those to try and put your military orders opponent in loss of lieutenant. Uh, hunting is either done by Joan, she could be dispatched with hacking, um, but be aware that she's BTS 6, so Oblivion might be the best program to use against her. Uh, then using things like K1 ammo, uh, AP, or even better EMs uh, would be pretty good. The Knight Commander usually hides in a Crozier Links, as I've said, so just kill everything in the Crozier Link just to be sure. Um, but the one that I like to take in terms of Lieutenant, and that's slightly less obvious, is not only hollow masking the Knight Commander as something completely unrelated and out of the Crozier Link, but that can be a bit of a waste, really, is a, chef, is a Teutonic Lieutenant. Now I like taking this because the Teutonics are stronger in some, uh, just because that has more survivability, it's got good dodge, it's got decent armor, it's got semi-decent BTS, uh, it's got good weapons, so that would be my bet if you're facing a military orders player with only one Lieutenant order. I think that's probably where my money would likely be. It could be a Knight Commander, because there is one profile there that only has one Lieutenant order, and it might be Hollow Master, something else, that's then too many options and it's too big brained. So in that event, then the Lieutenant is likely to be safe um, in that mission. 
So then we look at beating popular units. So talking about Teutonics in that previous section, they are great at defending against direct attacks. It's one of their key strengths. They've got dodge plus three on a starting pH of 14. So you're unlikely to chip away at them with direct templates. So shotguns, mines, are not the most effective weapon uh, against Teutonics. Using dice is better in that regard because uh, yes, they've got a really high pH with the plus three, but if you're rolling three or more dice shooting at them, the odds that you're going to get higher is actually fairly good. And then they're only armor three. So you could chip away at them if you want to do direct shooting. And if that's all you've got available, then just try and throw weight of dice at them. Generally, in terms of short range weapons, they've got SMGs. Some profiles do have a light shotgun. They've got pistols. Um, there's ones with light shotgun, I think, then have Panzerfaust as their next one up. There's then a Red Fury option, I think, a Spitfire option off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, that's generally what you'll be facing. So there is range bands that you could get in where you're more advantageous. They are martial arts too with CC22 and DACC, so you don't want to be using CC as your way of clearing these guys off the table. You're actually playing into their strengths a little bit and they've got two wounds. So yeah, you definitely want to watch out for that So because it kind of means that they're a bit more durable than maybe what you're throwing at them. But as I've hinted, they are quite weak against EM. Like that is definitely, so if you have EMCC, that might be your route into it, but you're going up against good, BF, uh, good CC, um, all of that sort of stuff. So you might not want that to be your primary approach. If you've got um, an Emirat, if you've got emitters, EM grenades, uh, if Blitzen, Zapper, those are the things you really want to be taking against the Teutonic because they're going to be facing two saves on their BTS, which is only three. Their BTS is going to be halved, but that only takes it down to two. But then because they're heavy infantry and they don't have veteran, they're going to be isolated and immobilized. So that's like EM would be a huge, like a great counter. The thing is, because they're good dodging, you don't really want to be leaning on the EM meter or EM mines because they could just dodge out of the template like fairly easily. But Blitzen, yeah, that's, I've been outdone so many times by long range Blitzen attacks, just because again, you're dodging one dice, yes, on 17s, but if you're facing a, a burst two, I know they're disposable, so you might only get two, um, or if you're facing multiple rounds from a few other people, yeah, that could be pretty ugly. Um, I've seen a Eugene player against me doing coordinated orders with a couple of things with Blitzens, just hitting my Teutonics, and they're gone very, fairly quickly. So it is a bit of an effort, but it is, probably the biggest chink in their armor um, is Blitzens and those sorts of weapons. The next unit you're likely to face that uh, you're gonna need to, to take away is the Tick Balang. That is one of my favorite units in the whole game and I use it quite a lot of military orders because it's coming with mimetism, it's got an APHMG, it's got climbing plus, it's got great armor, it's seemingly indestructible. But again, it has the same sorts of weaknesses that we've spoken about previously. I mean, it's got decent BTS, but it is definitely not impervious to being hacked. Like it's maybe one of the most hacked tags I've ever played with. And I don't know if that's because disproportionately I've taken it more than other tags, but I've been in games where it has been possessed multiple times, where it's been you know, uh, taken out just through hacking programs fairly easily. As soon as you've got repeater networks, and, and that is definitely one of the ways you slow military orders down, is just by having repeaters or pitchers because you don't want to get in there and be taking BTS saves uh, on the off chance that you know you could get through and then make an attack. You're then pushing them backwards. And the Tick Balang is a prime example of that where it does really nicely when it can advance and it can pick its engagements, but if it's pinned back by pitchers or repeaters, it really doesn't do very well. And even if you can get a hacker within zone of control of it, like whatever you're doing, that is a really easy way to kind of nip the Tick Balang in the bud a little bit. Um, and would definitely be the most frustrating thing for a military orders player is to just have their tick blang out of action because of a repeater or something like that. Another unit that you're likely to face uh, with military orders is the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre. Now I have mentioned it before. It's one of the few sneaky elements because it's got hollow projector. But if you've never faced hollow projector before, if you're seeing the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre for the first time, there are a couple of things that you can do to get around it or to mitigate its effectiveness. I found it to be quite a one hit wonder sometimes because you get that initial attack um, and they can work very well hitting one thing very well. 
but then you've kind of got to spend orders to optimize it and get it into the right position for the next attack or for ARO or something like that. Uh, and I generally end up spending the points out probably on a tick blank. However, when it is used to great effect, it can be very potent. One of the weaknesses uh, of this unit comes from people forgetting a key aspect of its greatest skill. So with Hollow Projector, you get to re you either get to reapply the Hollow Projector state when you're out of line of fire of a unit and you spend a whole order to go back into Hollow Projector. Now that could be quite consuming, but it might be worthwhile if you want if you need the minus three from Surprise Attack for coming out of Hollow Projector. The other time that you can go into Hollow Projector is in the states phase at the end of the turn. And it doesn't matter whether that's your active turn or your opponent's active turn. In the states phase, if you're out of line of fire of your enemies, you get to go back into Hollow Projector, which means placing the Hollow Projector tokens in base-to-base -to -base contact with the original model. Then, from that point on, the original model can be any one of those three. So you've kind of got to play it smart, where when you go into Hollow Projector, you might want to be moving the actual model to a new ARO firing lane or out of line of fire to draw some AROs and suck orders. But I think that's one of the one of the things. If you're playing against military orders, or if you are, it's a lot of thinking as to what it could be and what it couldn't be. And it's actually relatively easy to like get something out of Hollow Projector. So if you're facing a Knight of the Holy Sepulchre and you think it's going to attack you in that order, you are allowed to delay against Hollow Projectors. So by delaying against that first short skill, you are giving them the opportunity to just continue moving or to get closer and all of that sort of stuff. But if you are very, very certain that what's likely to happen is that it's going to reveal the real one and then launch an attack, you are able to delay your ARO until that happens. I think because Hollow Projector isn't in the game as much as things like Camo Tokens, people forget that it's very similar in how they work. But it is a true fact that Hollow Projector can be delayed against. Um, if you're good or lucky, you could, you know, a uh, Knight of the Holy Sepulchre player would be able to get you to target the wrong unit. But again, that's quite rare. And obviously, a weakness against Hollow Projector, and especially when they've got to be in base to base contact, is template weapons. You know, you could easily get two of those with a direct template, like a missile launcher or something like that. So it's very quite easy to mitigate that. And likewise, other direct templates like uh, mines, like flamethrowers, anything like that where you're putting a direct template down and you could potentially get all three of them at once, you're going to force the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre to reveal which it is because it's going to want to dodge out the way or shoot you back. So if you can get a warband into range using a chain rifle or something like that to get all three, then the hollow projector is going to be very useless very quickly. So that is an easy way to get around the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre is not to try and do ranged attacks because that's probably playing right into what they want. It's to get close enough for a chain rifle to get all three of those projectors. The thing you don't want to do is use anything with martial arts to try and kill the Knight of the Holy Not only have you got to try and find the right target, which could be fairly tricky, but they have natural born warrior, so they're going to mitigate your martial arts levels anyway. They also have very good CC, so that's not really the engagement you want. The, the one that the Knight of the Holy Sepulchre player really doesn't want is a template being laid on all three of those, or even two of them, uh, that forces something bad like a dodge or anything like that. So that's really the one uh, way to get around tonight with the Holy Sepulchre. Very doable, but only if you kind of like playing to its weaknesses instead of its strength. Another weakness of military orders is that they only have two drop troopers. Now I mentioned during the sneakiness side of things that they've got a Teutonic, uh, a Trinitarian hidden deployment, so that is one thing they have. But there's only two drop troopers, and neither of them are particularly good. So when you're looking at this, you've got the Knight of Santiago, which doesn't have parachutist, and yet it's a 39 plus point model. So the only option you have with it is to start it on the table, or to combat drop in and risk scattering back into your deployment zone. Now I find it mind boggling that on a 39 plus point model, there is no parachutist. So it's a bit of a rough option to be taking as the combat drop version, which means that if you're seeing an Ida Santiago, it's likely in a fire team and it's likely not that one. The other option is the Crusader Brethren, which is a lot cheaper, 31 points, but when you compare it to some other combat jump uh, units, it's not as good for the price. So while I have taken it maybe once, very mission specific, you won't see it used extensively, but still watch your back line for it to, because it may come through. Um, but neither of those are particularly attractive options, so you're unlikely to see them, but don't rule them out in their entirety. 
Another weakness for military orders, one that's very well known, is that there is no access to smoke at all. That is coupled then with the fact that in terms of MSV, they actually only have four units with MSV available to them. You have Dart, who has MSV1. You then have the Crozier, but only the Spitfire profile. That has access to MSV2. You then have the Black Friar. Now, all of those profiles have access to MSV2. I think there's three of them. And then Brother Constantinos, again, all of the profiles there, which I think there are two of, maybe one, have access to MSV2. So four units, three out of four of those have MSV2, which is good to see. But you'll find that this means that when you're use, if you have smoke available to them, so long as you're avoiding like those key ones. Now, Brother Constantinos, he's a relatively good unit, but you won't necessarily see it taken very often. Crozier Spitfire, I take all the time. Black Friar, I take all the time, but in the same fire team. And then Dart with MSV1 is a possibility, but it's not a guarantee. So if, you, if you're steering clear of that military orders like Crozier, Mixed, Black Friar, Fire Team, that is quite a common one, then actually you can use smoke to great effect elsewhere fairly easily. So that's definitely something that you could be using offensively because they don't have access to it. Now, they're not completely like lost if you've got MS, if you've got smoke because of those MSV2 units, but just know that those are the only ones that have access to it. So if they're on the table and you know where they are, then you can avoid them and you can use smoke to great effect elsewhere. But the big thing that MO, play, uh, MO players, so military orders players, are relatively fearful of is generally EM. Now, if you can get EM within range of things, then generally it's gonna be fairly painful because even on a BTS-6 unit, that's taking it down to three, um, and it's two saves on BTS halved. It's a horrible state to be in with the lack of veteran. Um, you know, you're gonna be isolated and immobilized, which is pretty, pretty rubbish. Um, so yeah, load up on your EM grenades, your emitters, your blitzens, your zappers, your EM mines, uh, if you really wanna jump into that. Um, if you have inf access to infiltrating camo, then that's really good because even though military orders have two wound units and so they're not necessarily afraid of eating a mine, because everything's so expensive, you don't necessarily want to be losing a wound on a Knight of Montessa just to clear a mine out of the way when you know you're probably gonna need that later to weather a, a fairly big attack. Uh, so yeah, you'd be unwilling, they'd be unwilling to weaken their models on just throwing them at mines. They'll use orc spots. Um, now those are something to be afraid of because uh, they're generally heavy flamethrowers, very fast. They can start upwards. Um, but if you've got infiltrating camo, if you've got mines, that's really the time to be trying to put that barrier of mines between you and the deploying military orders player. Um, and you'll definitely slow them down with repeaters, pitchers, all those sorts of things. So if you've got those sorts of things to lean into against a military orders player, EM, repeaters, pitchers, mines, very, very good things for you to lean into. How does that sound to you? Do you think that with that information, you could do a slightly better chance against a military orders player? As a military orders player, are all those are those things that you're afraid of? Do they generally, you know, cripple you a little bit when you're playing? Uh, do you find that you really don't like EM? Do you find that you're not a fan of mines too much? Um, how do you find the list building? Do you find that it's difficult to actually bring all the units you want because they're relatively expensive and that you run out of orders uh, and that your order pools are slightly smaller? Do you hate the lack of counterintelligence um, and strategios and things like that? Very interested to hear what you think in the comments below. So please jump in and let me know your thoughts and I'll be back soon with another video.